In this video, the auditor is checking what is the organization process for selecting the right measuring equipment. Watch this video and determine if the auditor does this effectively. So let's just follow up on what we did before lunch then. So um, we saw that for this product, you've been using the vernier caliper and the ruler. Yeah. And you've shown me where that's covered on the evaluation techniques within the control plan. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit, can we do the vernier first? Yeah. Can you tell me what is the tightest tolerance that we're trying to measure with that so, on, on this product? Yeah, the characteristic that we're measuring on that product um, is a 40 mil plus or minus 0 0.01 uh, tolerance. Okay, and can you show me what is the smallest graduation on this vernier caliper? So exactly the same. So this I can measure up to two decimal places. So 0 0.01 I can see on this um, vernier. So it matches the tolerance that we're working to. Right, and have you defined any internal rules about the selection of measuring equipment in your new product introduction process? From my point of view, not that I'm aware of. So our, our basic approach is if the measuring equipment uh, measures to the decimal places of the specification, then that's okay. So in the case right. of the vernier, two decimal places. Um, okay, so let's just try one more then. So I saw this was being used uh, to measure the length of this product. Yeah. And again, that is referenced back on the control plan. Yeah. What's the smallest graduation on this ruler? So millimetre, so we can measure. Okay. And uh, what's the tolerance? Uh, again, show me the tolerance on the control plan. So the, yeah, the tolerance on the control plan is actually um, plus or minus 0.5. So I really have a serious concern about are you selecting measuring equipment that has, has adequate discrimination when we compare it to the tolerances that you're specifying both in the product drawing yeah. and in the control plan. Yeah. So I intend to follow up on that when we move on in a minute to have a look at measurement system yeah. analysis. Yeah. It's interesting because in here we're just using the equipment that was defined in the early development phases so we don't really get involved in determining the type of measuring equipment. Right, but, but I will follow this up when we look at the new product yeah. introduction this afternoon yeah. because I know you've got several products that are in the development process. Yeah. How do we select the right measuring yeah. equipment? No, I think, yeah, that makes sense just based okay. on what we've said. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you. So let's summarise. The auditor was following the audit trails to check that the organisation has a process for selecting the right measuring equipment related to the tolerances that they are trying to measure. The generally accepted rule is that the measuring system should be able to discriminate down to one-tenth of the tolerance. And that is specified in any calibration or measurement system reference manual. In the two cases here selected by the auditor, there seems to be a fundamental problem. In the first case with the vernier, they are trying to measure a tolerance of 0.01 with a vernier that can only discriminate down to 0.01. So we are not going to be able to detect variation in the product with that type of discrimination. Then the auditor followed the audit trail with the ruler and it gets even worse. So the smallest discrimination on the ruler was one millimeter, yet the tolerance they were trying to measure with the ruler was 0.5 millimeter. So the auditor has uncovered here that really the organization has not got an effective process to select the right type of measuring equipment. So let's summarize the key learning points. Before an auditor should look at calibration and measurement system analysis, maybe should they should do the fundamental check has the organization selected measuring systems with adequate discrimination?